Well, learners, today we will talk about the topic teacher education and school education symbiosis. Our objectives are to know about teacher education in India, to learn about the research and innovation in education, to understand about the prevailing symbiosis in education, to understand the meaning of holistic approach of teaching learning, to know the need for taxonomy of educational skills. Our expected outcomes after learning this topic, the learners will be able to know about the education in India, understand about the growth of research and innovation in India, understand the concept of symbiosis, know the need for taxonomy of educational skills, apply technology in the classrooms. Well, we can introduce this chapter like this. The latest NCTE Gazette norms of November 28, 2014 present a sea change. We welcome two-year DLED, two-year B.Ed, and two-year M.Ed. We welcome half the size, that is 50, B.Ed unit, enhanced size, 50, M.Ed unit, corresponding increase in the teacher education staff size. We are yet to formulate compatible curricula with the enhanced time duration of the teacher education programs. We have excellent philosophers and philosophies. We have excellent sociologists and sociology. We have excellent psychologists and psychology. We have excellent historians and history. But how many of these find expression at the functional level? There are wide gaps between expectation and expression. Then, what has made the NCTE cut down the pedagogic qualifications of the prospective teacher educators? How long will the philosophers, sociologists, psychologists, and historians reside in papers only? When will they be liberated? The teacher education is lost in the rut and routines of micro-teaching mainly. While the present century has already flagged many challenges, when will we integrate even basic skills to realize skill-integrated education? The latest NCFTE 2009 envisaged to have humane and professional teachers. Do we really have two in one? Most of the teacher education institutions do not have laboratories. It is very good because education cannot afford to reside in laboratories only. What use are research and innovation if these do not find expression at the field level? There are wide gaps between the teaching competencies expected and practiced. We have more of descriptive and evaluative research than suggestive. We have more of quantitative research than qualitative. Ideas and ideas are excellent. The emerging question is how to convert idealism into realism. Let us reflect upon our education policies and frameworks. There is real expression at operation level. Our education policy and curriculum frameworks reside more in volumes than at functional levels. The emerging questions are whether the RTE assures and ensures education. Why rights of children have not been realized in India? Why creativity thinking and critical thinking of children is not optimally developed in our classrooms? How much is the correspondence amongst educational objectives, curricula, modes of transaction, and evaluation? What is the status of multiple intelligence, life skills, and continuous comprehensive evaluation in our schools? Have we sincerely tried to sustain and strengthen the knowledge base in various disciplines and domains? Are we respecting the beauties of childhood? booming energy of adolescence, 
paths of the youth and sparks of the teachers? Have we realized total quality management of our educational institutions? When Bhutan could sustain its cultural heritage and ethos, then how is it that we have not? How many schools observe yoga and yagya? Which schools nurture the childhood of children? Psychological, sociological, historical, environmental, physical, and metaphysical foundations are going weak day by day. There is perceptible degeneration of values and institutions. Are we really skilled and competent teachers and administrators? How many of us are post-conventional, autonomous, innovative, creative, revolting, educational administrators and teachers? How many of us are dedicated learners and teachers? Secondly, research and innovation, we'll talk about some expression. Every problem demands research. Our research methodology starts in womb and continues throughout life. Every moment, we ought to be innovative. Because of the latest novel problems encountered by us, there can be numerous approaches for research and innovation. Some of these find expression as follows. We'll talk about symbiosis. We should learn to play together, be it hockey, football, cricket, basketball, badminton, lawn tennis, carom, or any game for that matter. Every game demands energy, skills, coordination, oneness, unity, fellow being, liberation, full resonance with the players, ingredients, and field, of course, sportsmanship participatory approach of problem solving. In this, we have participatory approach of problem solving has been found to be very effective for addressing a problem, designing a computer program for solving a problem. A class is asked to design and develop a program for addressing a problem. Number of programs are designed and developed by the classmates. Various programs are presented by the classmates to the entire class. Each program presented is evaluated on some criteria by the classmates. Coefficient of concordance is computed to identify the best program. Another we can have is teaching statistical techniques of data processing through cooperative learning. A statistical technique of data processing is introduced by the teacher to the class. Then the class is given problem for statistical data processing some work out the solution correctly, whereas others incorrectly. Those who are not in a position to work out the solution correctly are asked to discuss with those who have worked out. It has been found that along with learning statistical data processing techniques, these learners develop many and affect attributes, such as cooperation, teamwork, sharing, diagnosis, and remediation, civilization, and citizenship. The very look establishes the face validity and process validity of the class. Then we have holistic approach of teaching learning. Holistic approach demands development of a complete human feelings flow. Motor creates, spirit reigns, and the self resonates with environment. For example, production and cracking of crackers. Let us take up an example of production and cracking of a cracker, namely multicolor fountain, which is normally called as anar. What are the ingredients of an anar? Where from these ingredients are procured and how? What is the anar container? What are the determinants of multicolors and height of the fountain? Is it joyful, harmful, or joyfully harmful? What is the status of child laborers who work in factory of crackers? 
Next, flow of collective wisdom through reflective dialogues. Here, a group or class experiences a phenomenon in real life situation or technology enabled. The group members are asked to record their reflections, followed by a reflective dialogue in the class, such as a child selling Indian flags on the advent of Independence Day or Republic Day, a cat and dog friendly together, a cow standing with its calf. It has been found to have very significant effects. The class really realizes collective wisdom. When we talk about personalized teacher education, here we have the personalized teacher education demands healthy and peaceful ambience and highly dedicated, resourceful, humane teacher educators. It is also called ZLP, Zero Lecture Program. The features of this program are such as follows. The pupil teachers devise their own programs and schedule, whereas the teacher educators are facilitators. The entire B.E. program course-wise is distributed amongst various groups of the class. The group members prepare their lessons and present to the group. The groups are rotated. There is sharing within and between the groups. The evaluation is done by the self, peers, teachers, and graded on the basis of congruence. There is a very healthy classroom culture and field culture right from morning till evening. The personalized teacher education program is going on at School of Education DAVV Indore MP. Department of Education, Banasthali Vidyapit, Banasthali Rajasthan, and Department of Education, University of Lucknow, Lucknow. Right from day one, the pupil teachers identify with their selves as teachers around the clock. Identity of teachers and teacher educators is well recognized and appreciated through this innovative program. Next is dedicated specialized teacher education programs. School of Education Devi Ahilya Vishwavidhyale Indore during 1990 designed, developed and implemented many innovative programs such as Bachelor of Computer Education, Master of Computer Education and Futurology of Education. These programs were self-supportive these could be run on the basis of collective wisdom of these programs. It is immense teacher education strength to find the pass out of these programs as domain leaders in many countries, namely India, USA, UK, Hong Kong, and Germany to name some of these. When we talk about constructivist and connectionist approach here, learning can be seen as a process of that of understanding and contextualizing socially, culturally, historically, and politically relevant. Here, it is important that the teacher's role is revitalized. Teacher education program has to inculcate the culture of germination of new ideas, incubation, innovation, creation, and construction. Every construction ought to be interconnected. Well, Indian Consortium of Research in Education, let's see what does it say. Center of Advanced Study in Education, CASE, Baroda is establishing ICOR at CASE. It is a consortium of institutions and individuals for research in education. It is a self-managing network of educational bodies that play a substantive role in the field of educational research. ICOR aims at assembling a diverse coalition of partners to formulate questions worth asking, contribute to research which is relevant in the contemporary context, helps in understanding educational mechanisms, promotes holistic learning, and highlights their policy implications worthy of action. The consortium is entirely a voluntary effort with its secretariat at the case. Center of Advanced Study in Education, Faculty of Education and Psychology. 
the MS University of Baroda. The member institutions and individuals shall be required to contribute towards its active. The case will further strengthen networking with the apex national agencies such as UGC, NCERT, NUPA, AICTE, AIU, CIIL, EFLU, ICSSR, and HBCSE, and also at the international level with various institutions and uh, agencies at Sweden, Germany, UK, USA, Australia, China, Thailand, and all the SAR countries. ICO shall be a non-profit forum consisting of institutions organized and operated for educational and professional purposes. An institution shall be eligible for membership if it has made a definitive, substantial, and continuing commitment to a credible research program or to ICO's goal to facilitate high quality research providing core services. From development of research proposal to surveying previous researches to statistical analysis and evaluation expertise. Specifically, the consortium seeks to become an intellectual center that will maximize the potential of education researchers and foster the development of networks of collaboration and support among educationists. Next is computer networks, internet in Flibnet. It is digital age. Within one seventh of a second, a message can cover the entire globe. The speed of electromagnetic waves being seven times the circumference of the earth. So, the globe at large has been in a position to realize omnipresence recency, and immediacy. Internet is a storehouse of global wisdom. We can have full networking with the globe anywhere, anytime, any purpose. For that, we need to be info savvy, net savvy, and techno savvy. Every one of us ought to be skilled in asking, accessing, analyzing, applying, and assigning, we have various information library networks. Indian library network is in Flipnet. We can become members of the in Flipnet and have access to the learning resources of all the interconnected libraries. Next is cosmic collective wisdom. The entire cosmos is full of collective wisdom. Varieties of airplanes flying in the sky have realized the wisdom of flying birds with wings and hollow bones. Two beautiful blue velvet beetles crossing a road, breadth-wise, holding a fully spherical seed of a fruit, climbing on it, pushing and pulling it, caught the attention of many a passerby. Presented, willful, Witful and unparalleled collective wisdom, controlling and holding the most unstable spherical seed, rolling swiftly, steadily, balancing the push and pull scientifically, playfully, cheerfully, lovely. Whenever passing from there, we always aspire the phenomenon. Third in the heading is symbiosis of teacher education and school education. There is only a little symbiosis between teacher education and school education. There are mismatches such as domain and pedagogy, problems and skills, teaching style and learning style, teacher and learner, mason and construction. Fourthly, we can say that need for taxonomy of educational skills. Teacher education institutions are lost in the rut and routines. There have been committees, commissions, curriculum frameworks, state society and judiciary interventions, but where is the expression? We need to introduce taxonomy of educational skills in education at the national level. The proposed taxonomy of educational skills has been differentiated into eight domains as follows. Self-development skills, social development skills, interpersonal and collaborative skills, 
communication skill, self direction skill, resilience, social responsibility skills, human relations skills, emotional skills, adjustment skills, human development skills and uh, citizenship skills along with accountability and uh, adaptability skills, life skills, critical thinking and training thinking, leadership, administration and management skills, creative leadership skills, administrative skills, time management skills, key skills for every manager, spiritual development skills, yoga skills, holistic development skills. Now the next. Renewal of the courses in education. There is a need to renew most of the courses in education. We should come out of our old courts. Do we expert committees know what are our problems and needs? We are stole with crowns of idealism, but we have to face the stark reality. For example, there is a need to renew curricula of teacher education and school education. Courses such as follows are proposed to be introduced in teacher education. Corporate social responsibility and school education comes number one. CSR and school education be introduced in teacher education curricula at the earliest. And the objectives for this course will be to set up and manage a school, to support school learning, to connect with the parents, to provide career guidance and psychological counseling to students and parents to ensure the ability of all the students in the class. And the units in this will be like unit number one, concept of corporate social responsibility, unit number two, CSR and elementary education, unit number third, CSR and secondary and higher secondary education, unit number four, CSR for realizing compatible education, and unit five in this course will be independence of both the corporate and society through interdependence. Second point in this, corporate social responsibility and higher education. And the objectives of this course will be, the prospective teacher educators will study the following roles of corporate sector. Sharing cost of higher education, supporting and strengthening higher education, establishing linkage between learning and earning, strengthening research and development. And the units in this course will be unit number one, CSR and science education. Unit number two, CSR and social science education. Unit number three, CSR for vocational education and programs. Unit number four, CSR and research and development in education. And unit five, CSR and neo-capitalism and neoliberalism in higher education. Third course will be health education in India. And the objectives of this course will be the prospective teacher educators will build a scenario of health education in India. The prospective teacher educators will develop a knowledge base of the most common and uncommon diseases in India, their diagnosis and remediation. The prospective teacher educators will learn the tech related health risks and learn how to fix these. The prospective teacher educators will study the health education vision and mission of India. And the units in this will be unit number one, health education scenario in India, entity and identity. Unit number two, most common and uncommon diseases in India. Unit number three, tech related health risks and how to fix them. Unit number four, health issues and health education, vision and mission. Unit number five, approaches to sound health. Fourth course will be mental hygiene and health guidance. And the objectives of this course will be the prospective teacher educators will develop a knowledge base of the mental health problems. They will learn the diagnosis and remediation of the mental health problems. They will learn how to strengthen mental hygiene and health. And the units in this will be nature and scope of mental hygiene and health. Unit number two, analysis of the defense mechanisms and conflicts. Unit number three, mental disorders and treatment. Unit number four, counseling for mental health. Unit number five, technology enabled diagnosis and remediation. The fifth course, 
will be taxonomy of educational skills and the objectives in this course will be the pupil teachers will be in a position to identify and classify various educational skills. The pupil teachers will be in a position to employ various educational skills with techno savvy skills, techno pedagogic skills, research and construct skills, yoga and spiritual development skills and self development and citizenship skills. And the units in this will be unit number one, techno savvy skills, unit number two, techno pedagogic skills, unit number three, research and construct skills, unit number four, yoga and spiritual development skills, unit number five, self development, citizenship skills and life skills. Six course will be ICT in education, designing and development and this course will be having the objectives like this. Appreciate the educational possibilities and opportunities of ICT. Use ICT as a medium of learning. Develop perspectives and approaches on ICT. Supported assessment. Undertake research using ICT. Design an individual website. Use open source software for educational purposes. This course will include these units. Unit number one. Understanding ICT, Unit number 2, ICT Curriculum and Pedagogy, Unit number 3, ICT for Professional Development and Educational Research, Unit number 4, Open Source Movement and Web Designing for Education, Unit number 5, Utilization of E-Resources. The seventh course in this will be ICT in Education, Web Technologies and E-Learning. The objectives of this course will be to prepare the prospective teacher educators to apply web technologies in classrooms, understand the issues related to copyrights, organize learning in a virtual environment, design and develop e-content for any school subject, critique on e-content, identify and organize appropriate e-content from the world wide web understand recent trends in ICT in education, develop competencies related to wiki editing. And the units in this will be unit number one, web 2.0 and semantic web for teaching learning. Unit two in this will be information sources and copyright issues. Unit three in this will be e-learning. Unit four, learning, course management and online evaluation. Unit 5 in this will be designing, development and validation of e-content material. Now we have certain recommendations for all these courses. 1. Institutional plants should have healthy structure and ambience. There should be adequate manpower planning for teacher education and school education. There should be symbiosis in school education and teacher education. Cultural heritage inclusive of Eastern values ought to be revived in Indian schools. Educational curricula and modes of transaction ought to be renewed. There should be added focus on activity approach. Cooperative, collaborative and participatory learning ought to be practiced. There should be adequate focus on constructivist and connectionist approaches. Creative and innovative teaching learning should be enhanced. All the laboratories of schools, science, maths, technology, psychology, language ought to be in a healthy state. All the schools should conduct action research. My problem, my sources and resources, my methodology, my solution, quality enhancement of my school. Every school ought to have guidance and counseling cell. All the subjects, science, maths, technology and social science should realize their essence. Life skills, multiple intelligence skills, emotional maturity skills, spiritual development skills, science process skills, creative composition skills should have due focus in Indian schools. Health education ought to be integral constituent of school education. There should be adequate focus on games and sports. 
all the teachers and learners should be techno savvy. There should be networking amongst schools within India and between other countries. Mathematics, history and geology seem to be the weakest links of the present day schools. These ought to be strengthened. Value education, peace and harmony education ought to be strengthened. There ought to be a sense learning rather than mere cognitive perceptual learning. CCE ought to be scientifically and humanistically implemented. Schools ought to be full of life rather than full of forced discipline. Taxonomy of educational research should find expression in both teacher education and school education. Education ought to realize its identity. While summarizing the whole topic, we can say that when there is a change everywhere, every elsewhere, then how come teacher education and school education are stale and sterile? When will there be valid manpower planning in education? How will we realize healthy teacher education and schools education? How will we realize corporate social responsibility in education? How will we realize technology integrated education? When will we design activity based curricula? When will we learn cooperatively? When will we practice participatory approach of problem solving? When will we design suitable inclusive education? When will we introduce the constructivist and connectionist approaches? When will we realize creative and critical thinking simultaneously? How will we learn to address the developmental challenges? When will we learn to sustain the cultural heritage of India and to have perfect vision of the invisible? When will we learn to value the indigenous? And when will education realize its identity in India? Pumping in crore of rupees can facilitate education, but it demands crores of heads, hearts, hands, and souls in full resonance to realize education. RTE can legalize education, but it demands the wish and will of all to culture Indian education. Once again, we need to have full determination with action to realize elementary education, higher education, and vocational education, and professional education. Visual learning, environment health, life skills, social networking, corporate social responsibility, technology integration, activity-based cooperative learning, participatory learning, inclusive education, constructivist approach and connectionist approach, choice-based, all these aspirations have their roots in ancient Indian education. Could we revive the Eastern history to modernize teacher education and education? That is the moot point today. Thank you.